What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your Techno Dad here, and in today's video, we're gonna be checking out a new turntable by Techniques. It's called the SL1200GR, and we're gonna get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if you're new to the channel and you wanna learn about 4K, home theater and audio products, and how to set them up properly, you should consider subscribing because I'm here to help. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when I do a live stream to answer your questions or when the next video gets released. Well, now that all that housekeeping's out of the way, let's get into it. All right, everyone, I am super stoked. And before we get into this new Technics turntable, I do wanna give a big shout out and thank you to Robert from Value Electronics. So thanks, buddy. He sent this over for me to review. Now you can't just go to Amazon and buy one of these things. So if you are interested in picking up any of the new Techniques turntables or even their amplifiers and speakers, definitely head on over to Value Electronics. The link is down in the description. So I am super stoked. Uh, you guys know I'm a DJ. I have a pair of 1200s from 2001. Still have them, still have them. Now in 2016, Technics redesigned the SL1200 turntable and took the hi-fi world by storm they created an amazing new reference turntable. Now this thing did come with a pretty steep price tag, coming in at a whopping $20,000. Hold on, let it sink in. 20K, buy a car or a record player? Hmm, what should we do? Well, that model was called the SL1200G, and they decided to make a cheaper model, which is the one I'm reviewing today, and that again is the SL1200GR. Now they brought down some features from the $20,000 model, like the coreless direct drive motor, which eliminates cogging that was caused by rotational irregularities. Now they also revamped the platter, making it vibrate less and added a high sensitivity tone arm. Again, all that for the low, low price of $16.99. Now if that's out of your budget, I have included some links down in the description for a budget-friendly turntable option if you guys are looking into getting into vinyl. Now I know vinyl has made a huge comeback and everybody's into belt-driven turntables and I'm completely stumped as to why. So if you are new to the channel and don't know, I am a DJ, I've been DJing since 2001 and back then every club I DJed in LA and Hollywood had turntables and mainly they had Technics turntables. As I mentioned before, I still have my original pair of SL1200 M3Ds that I bought back in 2001. I did, however, DJ on belt-driven turntables many times, and it was a pain in the butt. Mainly because once you had two records synced up, one would eventually go out of sync due to the belt and motor system. So what does that mean? That's, that's just like an inherent problem with a belt-driven turntable they won't keep a steady BPM. If you don't know what BPM is, it's beats per minute. That can be very frustrating for a DJ, but it's even more frustrating if you're listening to, uh, you know, a turntable or, or your music, your favorite music, and, you know, there's gonna be slight variations in the, the beats per minute. So Technics introduced the first direct drive turntable in 1970. And unlike the inherent issues of a belt drive system, Technics turntables became sought after by DJs around the world. And especially when they decided to stop manufacturing in 2010. In 2016, they released their new reference turntable with a twin rotor, surface facing, coreless direct drive motor with magnets placed on both sides. Now, what does this mean and why is it good? Well, what happens is, Adding the magnets to each side of the motor eliminates the issue called cogging, which describes rotation irregularities of the motor, which is a unique uh, issue with the direct drive systems. Thankfully, the lower end model, the SL1200GR, inherits a single rotor surface facing coreless direct drive uh, motor that also eliminates this cogging issue. So that's what they kind of transferred on down from the $20,000 model to the $1,700 model. Well, now you guys know well, like, what's new with the new turntables. Let's stop talking and go upstairs and check it out. Oh yeah. Okay, so when we open the first flap of the box, we are greeted with a diagram that shows exactly how the box was packed. 
This looks a little complicated. So the first item I got out of the box was a pair of RCA cables. Next, we need to get the platter out of the box and remove the magnet cover. Next out of the box looks like the lid. I remember cracking mine back in the day, so I've got to make sure this thing stays safe. There's a little setup sheet that shows you where the RCA connections, ground screw, and IEC power are located on the unit itself. So I'll walk you through that once we get the turntable out of the box. There's a thin envelope here that contains the rubber slip mat. Your records are not going anywhere with this thing on. Finally, we get an instruction manual. Diving deeper, we get a counterweight, an adapter for a 45 RPM record, an extender for the tone arm, this plastic piece, which is a cartridge holder, here's the head shell, and here are both together. I might actually use this as I just ordered a new mono needle. We get hardware to attach the cartridge to the head shell, a pretty fat IEC power cable, ground cable with spade connectors, and finally we get the turntable itself. This thing looks gorgeous, look at this, oh my gosh. Now before we get the platter on, let's go ahead and connect everything on the bottom of the turntable. I turn the Technics on its side to expose the connections. All these connections are pretty straightforward. Make sure the RCA cables are plugged in all the way and the ground screw is nice and tight. The IEC power plug goes underneath this little cutout and that's probably where you're supposed to route all the cables. All right, so let's get this platter on the turntable. When placing the platter onto the base, just line up the center hole to the spindle on the base and slowly put it into place. Next, we put the rubber slip mat on the platter and we're done with the platter. Now I place the counterbalance on the back of the tone arm and then attach my Ortofon 2M Blue head shell and put the lid on the turntable. So now let's check out the controls of this turntable. In the front left corner, we have the power switch, start stop button, and speed controls. The SL1200GR supports 33, 45, and 78 RPM records. To get 78, you have to press both 33 and 45 at the same time. Toward the center of the front of the turntable, we have a stylus illuminator. On the far right, we have a pitch control with a reset button and a two times button. So we can change the pitch either by plus or minus 8% or plus or minus 6%. Now it's time for me to do some more setup. And if you need to know how to align your needle head and adjust the height of your tone arm, I made a separate video on how to set up a turntable and I'll link that in the description and with the card up top. So let's get the lid on and see how this thing spins. Yeah! As you may know, I have a rack behind my TV which has a five channel amp, a Halo integrated, and the turntable is at the top. Currently the turntable is connected to the Halo integrated and that is pushing 160 watts per channel into a pair of Klipsch RF73s. This is a phenomenal setup. All right, so we went over the new tech of the turntable and I showed you how to assemble it out of the box. And I'm really super excited for this as I'll be using this exclusively for all the upcoming audio demos. I have a few different speaker brands in-house and more on the way. Now again, if you wanna know how to set up a turntable, the link's down in the description. And if you're looking for a more budget-friendly option, I have info down in the description for that as well. Now, if you guys have any questions about this turntable, I will be using it for quite some time. Go ahead and leave them down in the comments below or hit me up on whichever social media you like to use. Once again, I wanna give a big shout out to Robert from Value Electronics. Thank you so much, buddy, for uh, letting me review this and sending it on over. All right, well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys liked it, go ahead, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D, I'm your Techno Dad, and I'll see you next time.